In this video, I'm going to do a derivation concerning the momentum operator. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. In this derivation, I'm going to start off with the time derivative of the expectation value of x. I'm going to mathematically manipulate uh, that time derivative. I'm going to turn it into an expression that we're going to use in the next video to define the momentum operator. So let's get started. This derivation is very important uh, when we're talking about momentum in quantum mechanics. So first of all, we want to look at the time derivative of the expectation value of x. So this is the total derivative. It's the total derivative with respect to time. And these little triangular brackets, they are denoting the expectation value of x. And x is our little position uh, variable, or the coordinate that is describing position. Let's go ahead and write the definition of the expectation value. And we can expand this out and write it in this form. What we have is an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of x times the probability density function. And the probability density function is given by the wave function, mag uh, magnitude of the wave function squared. And this integral is with respect to x. Now, here's a very important point. The next step is going to involve moving this derivative inside the integral. When the, when the derivative is outside the integral, it is a total derivative with respect to time. Because this integral only depends on time, we are integrating with respect to x. So that get, gets rid of the x dependence. So this is just a time-dependent integral. But the integral is not the same as the integrand. The integrand is everything that's inside that needs to get integrated. All of this stuff over here, what we have to do is we have to move the derivative and we have to differentiate that. But the integrand depends on x and t. So this is going to turn into a partial time derivative. It's also going to ignore this x because a time derivative uh, treats this x as a constant. So let's go ahead and write this with the derivative on the inside of the integral. So we're going to have uh, minus infinity to plus infinity, we're going to integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity, and then we're going to have x times the partial time derivative of the probability density function. And I won't write the explicit dependence on x and t. So this over here, this is what we have now. So this guy is the expectation value still. It's the time derivative of the expectation value. We've just moved the time derivative on the inside of the integral. Now what we can do is we can actually see that this over here is the same as psi star times psi. And in the past few videos, uh, particularly the ones where we proved uh, that normalization is preserved, uh, we actually talked about an expression of this exact form. We had a partial time derivative, and we were taking the partial time derivative of this combination, psi star times psi. And what we did was we expanded uh, this using the product rule for differentiation. And then we substituted in the Schrodinger equation and, and the complex conjugate of the Schrodinger equation as well. And then we canceled the term involving the potential, and that gave us an uh, interesting combination, an interesting term. And we're actually going to use that expression that was used in earlier videos in this playlist, and we're going to continue uh, with this derivation using that expression. So I won't explicitly show how we jump from here to here. I'll just kind of guide you through it verbally. So this is going to be equal to i h bar over 2m. Now pay close attention to this constant. I'm pulling the constant out of the integral, but this constant has a lot of information as to where this expression came from. So again, we're going from minus infinity to plus infinity, and we're going to keep that x there. But this time derivative has now become a x derivative. It's still a partial derivative. And what we have on the inside is psi star times d psi dx, and then we have minus d psi star dx, and we're multiplying by psi. And this is integrated with respect to x. So where did this come from? This is, again, the thing that we talked about in the proof for normalization preservation. And what, what does this actually look like? What we've done is we've taken out a, a partial derivative with respect to x, but if we were to put that back in, what we would see is there would be second derivatives over here. So we have some combination with second derivatives with respect to position. 
And that actually comes from the part of the Schrodinger equation that deals with kinetic energy. So that kinetic energy operator. That's the bit that doesn't cancel out. The potential part cancels out. There's a plus and a minus. But the kinetic energy part doesn't cancel out. So we get this kind of uh, swapping of derivatives with a minus sign. This minus sign actually comes from complex conjugation because an i turns into a minus i. Keep in mind, there's actually an i out over here. So what we could do is we could put this constant back inside and we would see that there's an i multiplying this and a minus i multiplying that. That is again related to complex conjugation. But where did this h bar over 2m come from? Well, if you remember from the kinetic energy term in the Schrodinger equation, there is a minus h bar squared over 2m. And what we did when we put the Schrodinger equation inside is we had to divide by i h bar. And when you divide by i h bar, you lose one power of h bar. And you also change the sign. So this guy over here, this h bar, used to be an h bar squared. But dividing through actually got rid of one of the powers of h bar. So this is just a little a verbal explanation as to where this comes from. Make sure you watch the other videos in this playlist. There's earlier videos concerning normalization. Uh, and then you'll understand all of the steps uh, going from here to here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to implement integration by parts. And there's also a video dedicated to integration by parts. So go and watch that one before uh, you look at the next step of this derivation. Integration by parts is going to allow us to move a derivative on one part and swap it with another part. So we're going to take this derivative, pick it up, and put it on the x. But when we do that, we're going to have to introduce a negative sign. So there's going to be a minus sign out the front because we swap the derivative uh, from one function to the other. So integration by parts uh, occurs when you have an integral of a product of functions. It's kind of like the reverse of the product rule for differentiation, only in integral form. It's the integral version of the product rule. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's apply integration by parts. We have to keep in mind that the boundary terms can be ignored. Why is that the case? Because the boundary terms are going to be at minus infinity and plus infinity. And what happens to psi and psi star at plus infinity and minus infinity? Well, they have to go to 0. Right? They either asymptotically approach 0 as uh, we go away from the origin, or they uh, go to 0 on a finite domain, as long as there is a finite area. Right? This is, again, from the normalization condition. So let's go ahead and implement uh, integration by parts. So integration by parts is going to involve swapping this derivative and moving it onto the x. And what we're going to get is a derivative of x with respect to x. And that's just 1. And that's actually going to get rid of this derivative. So we're just going to have this stuff inside the brackets inside the integral. But we're going to have to introduce a minus sign uh, in order to compensate for swapping the derivative. So we're going to have this. We're going to have inside the brackets, we'll have psi uh, star d psi dx minus d psi star dx times psi. And this is all being integrated with respect to x. Now, this is a very important point for integration by parts. The thing that we did to get from this step to this step is we introduced a minus sign. And when we introduced the minus sign, we got to swap this derivative over. We got to drag it over onto this function. And so uh, what I could also write implicitly in here, the partial derivative of x with respect to x is equal to 1. So this guy would actually fit inside here, right? if you wanted to write it out explicitly in full. So this is the procedure for integration by parts. We're going to do integration by parts again in a second. So we're going to have to, this derivation involves integration by parts twice. So what we're going to have to do first is we're going to split this integral into two separate integrals. So we'll do that down here. I'll split this integral into two little ones. And we're going to have minus i h bar over 2m. So it's still the same constant. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this integral and this integral. So what do we need to do? We need to have integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi star d psi dx. And then we're subtracting off this integral over here, the integral of this little chunk, which is integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of d psi star dx times psi. And this is all inside the brackets. So all I've done is 
uh, split up the integral into two separate integrals. Now, you can see that there's something suspicious. And you might actually be, be able to see what the next step's going to be. What we're going to do is we're going to apply integration by parts just to this second integral. And when we apply integration by parts, this minus sign is going to turn into a plus, And we'll be able to uh, move this derivative over onto the psi. And that's actually going to give us the same thing as over here. So what we're going to get is this. We're still going to have the same constant out the front. We have minus i h bar over 2m. But now inside the brackets, we're going to have this integral. We're going to have this uh, psi star d psi dx. And this is all integrated with respect to x. But when we do integration by parts, we're going to swap the order of this derivative. We're going to move this derivative from the psi star onto the psi. And we're going to turn this minus into a plus, because minus minus gives us a plus. So now we have a plus integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi star d psi dx, and again, integrating with respect to x. Now have a look at this. Performing integration by parts on just this term over here has given us the exact same integral that we have on the left. So now we have this integral on the left, and this integral on the right, and they're the exact same combination. So what we can do is we can rewrite that as minus i h bar over 2m times 2 times the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi star d psi dx. And have a look what we have over here. What we have is a factor of 2, because we have two of the, the same integral occurring over here. And we also have a factor of a half. So there's a 2 and a half. And those guys are going to cancel. So the 2 is going to cancel with the half. And we'll just be left with, uh, we're going to be left with minus i h bar over m. And then we're going to have this integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi star times d psi dx. And again, we're integrating with respect to x. And this is actually what the goal of this video is. We want to link this guy over here, the time derivative of the expectation value of x, to this expression over here. And this expression may look very familiar to you if you've seen the momentum operator. What we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up multiplying this by mass, and that's going to get rid of this m. And then we're going to end up moving this minus i h bar inside of here, and we're going to form a sandwich. We're going to form an integral sandwich. And that is how we're going to define the momentum operator. So here's a quick summary of what this derivation involved. What we did was we took the time derivative, we wrote out the definition of the expectation value of x, then we moved the derivative inside the integral. We used uh, this relationship that we found in a previous video. Then we applied integration by parts. Then we broke up the integral into two smaller integrals. And we applied integration by parts just to the second one of those integrals. And that gave us another copy of the left integral. So then we added the left to the right. And that gave us a factor of 2. That factor of 2 canceled with the factor of 1 half of the front. And that actually just gave us this final expression. The subtle nuances here are to do with integration by parts and the step from here to here. So make sure you watch the other videos in this playlist so you can see all the, the nuances of going from here to here and all the nuances of applying integration by parts. Remember that we ignored the boundary terms. All the boundary terms were ignored because they go to 0. Why? Because psi and psi star always asymptotically go to 0. Uh, as the wave function goes away from the origin. So if you look really, really far away from the origin, in the limit of x goes to minus infinity and x goes to plus infinity, you're going to find that it vanishes. So that is it for this video. Make sure you watch the next video where we use this expression and actually define the momentum operator. You can find all the videos in this playlist if you click over here.